Another thing that I want to watch is this video that is covering the patch 10.2.6, which probably was announced three weeks ago, but I, I believe it was released a couple days ago. Is it worth it? The thumbnail of this video was, is it time to go back? And I'm considering, should I go back to retail? So I'm going to watch this 17 minute video to consider going back to retail. Maybe it's time. Season four has just been announced. It's released. Okay, you don't hear shit. That's normal. Fine. We're changing it. He said that season four has been announced, so I'm right. Three weeks ago it was announced, but now I think it is released. It's in a couple of weeks, actually on the 23rd and 24th of April, and it is time to come back to WoW. Or is it? It's always going to be a subjective discussion when we talk about this, and are we going to be shills, or are we actually going to speak the truth about WoW, and whether you should play it, or wait for the war within? Let's see what we have. Well, right now we know that we're in 1026 and 1026 came with Plunderstorm and a bunch of other updates, but the real update is going to be season four that launches on the 23rd and 24th of. Everyone is talking about season four. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, as a person who is uh, watching what is happening in a while, kind of. Season four just. One day I was scrolling in YouTube and Twitch and on the 23rd, a lot of things got recommended about season four. No one is talking about season four, even after it is released. I don't know what a patch can bring to the table that much that everyone is hyped about it. Everyone would be hyped if Plunderstorm relaunches in another fashion in a way if it's free. Everyone will be hyped about the next phase of season of discovery. I don't know if people are hyped about the new season of Dragonflight, I'm not gonna lie. But I'm gonna stay here to understand what the season offers. Let's see. April. Great! Season 4 comes with all of the dungeons that Dragonflight released, with the exception of Dawn of the Infinite, because we've had it for enough time. I think it's time to go back to the roots. And we're going to have... Well, not faded raids, but we're going to have awakened raids and we're going to have all of the Dragonfly raids available at the same time, kind of on a rotation to keep us engaged and give us some fun content. On top of all of this, a bunch of other stuff is coming with Season 4 and eventually 10 to 7 along the lines, which is still part of Season 4 and kind of in the same big bat bucket. Now, there's a lot to be excited about Season 4, but at the same time, I know some players, because I have some friends as well, that are like, nah, this is still not good enough, I'm gonna wait for War Within. So which one are you? Should you change your mind? Should you actually play Season 4, 10 to 6, 10 to 7, or wait for the War Within? Well, let's see exactly what we have, because we can be subjective, we are content creators making content on WoW, I am a so there is some bias. I am a surgeon! Uh, is there to begin with and we're subjective in the sense that we, well we really love the game we have a vested interest in playing the game probably more than most people so maybe us telling you to play or not to play is not really gonna resonate with you all at the same time so here's my subjective i love playing wow take and here's that listen maybe that you should wait take. for war with intake first of all Let's look at the Let's Play WoW first. Season 4 is actually really cool. And to kind of give you the... Uh, there is no such argument. Season 4 is actually pretty cool. Give me the whys, you know? I'm waiting for the whys still. The general opinion first and then go into the details. If you liked playing Shadowlands and BFA in any capacity, at least some parts of it, doing endgame, then you're gonna love Season 4 of Dragonflight, which <laughs> I know that doesn't really say much or if anything yes. that detracts you from playing even more, but hear me out. In terms of actual Mythic Plus and raids, Season 4 is actually really good now you don't have to take my word for it we've done plenty of videos on it and i think you've seen probably or heard at least bellular's video on the numbers of 
I'm not gonna lie, I don't have any experience with raiding, doing dungeons in Shadowlands, BFA, Dragonflight, so that doesn't say shit. Uh, sorry, sorry, I, did. I was not supposed to say that word. Subscribers that WoW currently has, and I think by the time you watch this, the GDC discussions will be live as well, so we will know exactly what's going on with the number of the players playing WoW, but we know one thing for sure is that WoW is being played more at this moment, before Season 4 releases, is being played more than it has ever been played in the last two expansions in terms of actual people logging and all of that stuff and in terms of subscribers as well well funny enough this number came out after we've did all of the videos looking at logs and parses and saying that dude there's like five times more logs and parses now than ever since legion and that was like dude that doesn't make sense that couldn't just make legion classic i think this is the logical logical continuation of things just skip all the classics skip cataclysm classic skip mists of pandari classic drone classic legion classic and just let it be and that's gonna be <laughs> no brainer right possibly be five times more people when where there are probably not five times more people but there's definitely more people than we've had in the last couple of, of expansions and there is a reason for that the reason is very simple playing wow is fun and that has a lot to do wow. with what dragonflight is and that guy is saying a lot do you guys realize he's a little bit like politician i'm not gonna lie he's he's talking so much but saying nothing at the same time i um, if you haven't played dragonflight yet or if you've played let's say first season then you're like maybe this isn't for me and you trailed off my ears are full of water <laughs> here's stuff that you might enjoy but i'm not saying that you should you might enjoy the new talent system the classes that are actually played right now after multiple reworks for a lot of them majority of the classes are actually really fun the talent system is really cool all of what your class does is incorporated within your class there's no external pop bro is yapping about nothing do we do we enjoy Kalidinche, I know that you're not in, in this discussion really, but do we enjoy the talent system right now? Because I feel like it's not very good. Like, they kind of try to get back to the talent trees and all of that, but... Is it good? Uh, it's good. I, that... I, I don't know, I personally don't enjoy it that much. Power that. system that you need to grind to make your class complete. Remember those times back in BFA when your spec just didn't feel right unless you had those Azerite traits or in Legion with the artifact weapon or in Shadowlands with the legendaries? Yeah, I remember those times too. Those sucked. But no, the oh, these didn't suck, man. How did you say that? I love the artifact weapons, bro. I love them. I love them. Oh man, there's a reason why Legion was at the, at the top of the world, man. Your class is actually complete. Sure, the tier set makes it a little bit more fun and having really cool trinkets bumps the numbers as well, but that's always going to be the case, right? That's tier sets have been the thing since vanilla and trinkets also since vanilla so that's not necessarily a surprise there were anything new but the classes are fun and if you're wondering what am i watching right now this guy his video uh, is 10.2.6 uh, season 4 is it worth it and the thumbnail of the video is it time to come back to retail i want to make this guy make me go back to retail okay this is why i'm watching this i'm gonna give him 17 minutes of my life this of course could be subjective they're way more fun than they have been probably ever that i have personally played there's they're more intricate and the simple classes are more fun have more engaging rotations but you know this is this can all be subjective so you might not like it yeah sure i do have okay. to point the elephant in the room some classes did not receive the new treatment as much as everybody else dk's for instance dude are you gonna make 16 minute video where you were covering all of the classes or you're just gonna make me go back to wow in general what kind of a salesman are you
are still some of the classes that still need reworks and that's funny because i'm actually considering maining a dk despite rogue being one of the best design classes together with red paladins and havoc demon hunters and still i want to play dk because it's just i don't care what you want to play bro i really don't it plays really well even if it's kind of the same playstyle. it's been chiseled it's been refined it does really well and that essentially applies to all of the specs now that's the gameplay part of it in terms of end game raids have never been more fun where amir drusil is definitely the most fun raid we've had so far and okay. if we're gonna take shadowlands as any indication for the season four awakened slash faded style of raiding where you have all of the raids on a rotation raiding is going to be even more fun because first of all if you have thought or have had this thought at any point in time uh go, coming in season four man i just don't want to prog all of the raids again or i haven't played the raids before or i've played them before i don't want to i don't remember what they're doing anymore the raids are going to get nerfed turbo giga nerf they're being nerfed at the moment so essentially Why? if you've progressed through vault of the incarnates in season one and you're thinking that you forgot a hundred percent of it you're gonna have an easier time playing it like significantly easier time playing it now in season four with everything going on that's the point of it that's why we only have access to a raid well the awakened wait wait i'm the top one casual but what is the point of uh making the raid easier like you're already having uh gear and everything and it's already easy for you what is the point of making it easier isn't isn't the point of the game to be a little bit more mechanic heavy it's or i don't understand something version of the raid that is because you did all the other raids are still up we only have access to those once every three weeks and that's going to be so easy that you're probably going to just clear the entire heroic bosses if you're like a heroic raider in half of your normal raid night that's how it ended up being in shadowlands over the course of the patch so you essentially can just do an entire clear of an entire raid within one week with no actual progress issues maybe if you go on mythic maybe if you haven't cleared it before or maybe it's if it's a little bit of your uh, above your skill level but you are going to kill bosses harder than what you are used to within the awakened season that is how season four for faded worked in shadowlands that's how it's going to be now and because it's going to be easier it's more fun it, there's more incentive to play it plus the loot is <laughs> give his name so i can block him in my feed in youtube <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna give you your it's name crazy, after the video. In Amir Drusil, farming the loot, that cool weapon, the legendary weapon, if that's something for you, is going to be really, really fun. And the items are actually really strong. So that's always great for an RPG to be able to have some loot that you know gives you the power, gives you the feelings like man, I'm just gonna smack, smack some some stuff with it. And obviously, gearing your character through the endgame content, and we're gonna get to Mythic Plus as well, is going to be great for the war within launch when the pre-patch is going to come sometime in the summer if they're going to be respecting their uh, roadmap for 2024 and you're gonna start war within is gonna come out in the summer does that make sense because they're launching the alpha now there should be a beta that is gonna continue a couple of months the alpha is gonna end probably at the middle of may the beta is gonna be probably may june july maybe maybe you know start leveling within war within by by fall probably we don't really have the release date but roadmap once again then you know having all these extra loot is going to feel that much better going to the war within now in terms of mythic plus the system next week is pre-patch for war within or you're talking about kata Akata, yes, yes, next week is with pre patch. I'm gonna talk about uh, after this video. System has also been made way, way, way more fun. First of all, we don't have a seasonal affix anymore. If you've missed that part, the affixes themselves are way easier. They've been nerfed multiple times, and the scaling is better essentially. Plus, you now have a meaningful loot progression as you go through Mythic Plus, where you can loot items and constantly upgrade their eye level more and more and more to kind of. This guy is not even the worst, you know? This guy is uh, actually one of the better ones because he has a uh, 17 minute video that he's yapping, yes. But most of other YouTubers 
are just a reaction of the reaction and they're making like 40 minutes video that is covering nothing so yeah hi bubble reflect the overall progression within uh, your mythic plus season or even in raids as well because the item upgrade system is also present in the raid to make it feel like you're not wasting your time or that you're not losing out on eye levels for not playing a harder content you can still get decent decent gear from lower content if you're not interested in getting the highest level congrats bubble congrats on finishing your exam what's next now man full of content period now, another thing about Mythic Plus, which is probably a controversial topic, but I am going to stand my ground on this. Dragonfly dungeons are the funnest dungeons so far. Sure, they're the newest dungeons so far, and we've played them the least out of all of the dungeons, but they're also... I don't agree about that. I have played... I believe I have played the Dragonfly dungeons. And... Uh, I... so very very big on AO. I just realized that I haven't read your message correctly. Uh, yeah, good luck for your exam tomorrow, and congrats on finishing the project. And you actually don't need luck. You're gonna ace it. We and big AOE has always been some of the best and most fun times people have had in Mythic Plus. I can speak for myself, I can speak for anybody that has said anything about how fun M Plus is when there's big, big giga packs and giga AOE. That is just stupid, stupid, ridiculous fun. Oh, maybe I haven't <laughs> I haven't seen the game in this perspective because I'm playing Evoker. And I'm not sure how much aoe does an evoker have maybe i'm not doing my rotation right since that's kind of like the majority or at least most of the dragonfly dungeon pool that we're gonna have in season four and on top of all of this concerning both mythic plus and raids we're gonna have the dinar system where you essentially play the content and you unlock the well it's not the dinar but it's the boolean it's a token that you can use to buy actual predetermined gear that can be upgraded all the way to the max eye level permitted within the game regardless of the content that you're doing to get that item for yourself so if you're not a mythic creator and you rate heroic i like how it's labeled priceless Just... you'll be able to buy one of these items and if you farm the crests i think the aspect crest or whatever they're going to be called the highest level difficulty crest which you don't have to do mythic rating for then you can upgrade that item eventually to a mythic quality item so you can get the best gear in the game and you don't have to worry about the rng of that one trinket just never ever dropping now this is the good part of season four cup pulled with probably what 1027 is going to bring but we don't know too much about that we just know that it's going to be new events and the time walking pandemonium is all up for grabs as to what it is about but let's talk about why probably you should wait for the war within with all of the good changes because there are plenty of so we talked about the good stuff and now we're going to talk about the bad stuff good changes and okay. i do have to stress this out because it seems like whenever people talk about the negative aspects of dragonfly they don't give the devs the credit that they're due with the fact that uh, they've improved a lot of the core aspects but a lot of the other core aspects are not yet improved the new player experience is still going to be difficult so if you've never played wow right now it's not necessarily like you cannot play wow if you're a new player but it's going to be difficult and it's going to be a little bit weird coming into wow now as opposed to the war within however i'm not sure if this will be fixed in the war within either because we don't know too much about the new player experience all we know is that new player experience although there are tools to make it easy for you to get into the game there's going to be a lot of stuff slapping you into the face and you won't know what most of it is until you actually dedicate a lot of time to it just to find out that later on it doesn't really matter that much that's still part of the game and that still sucks when it comes to you know leveling going through all their expansions in the end wow is an expansion based game where nothing matters except for the latest expansion now if you're excited about war within and uh, you want to have time to understand what wow is all about maybe it is a good time to come now and experience season four even if it's clumsy even if you won't get much out of it you'll at least start to understand what the game is another core aspect of the game is the setting i gotta be honest i am not a fan of it either the story is not something that i particularly enjoy and it is part True. of the reason why a lot of players are still not excited to come back to wow 
the overall feel of the expansion being soft in the way of an epic story that should be told should be of being em overly emotional and npcs and characters being a little bit flaccid or uninspiring or unheroic or anything like that like nobody is really just playing on lowest settings i'm playing like that as well cool nobody's really epic anymore everybody's just like oh i guess we're empowered now yay power of friendship that's you know if you don't like that kind True. of stuff then and all of the other stuff isn't do isn't doing it for you then you should probably wait for the war within that's not that hasn't usually i'm not watching the story that much but that put me off so much whenever i watched the last raid cinematic it, it was just barack was so badass looking boss man and we defeated him and the end was like uh is this it this is it really really man uh i mean it was not disappointing as shadowlands but it was just uh okay we defeated like one of the most epic dragons out there but now everything is fine you know it didn't change it's still a little bit weird like if we take a look at evokers as a representation of the parts of Modern WoW that personally I think are a little bit on the negative side or a lot on the negative side depending on how you like your fantasy games to be it's soft it's not epic it's not the dragons that you want it's not the also oh, yes evokers are just <laughs> scuff dragons <laughs> whenever they introduced them first I was like Oh my god, we're gonna have dragons. And me personally, as having a Volker myself, is just a scuffed dragon, man. A scuffed dragon. That's all I can say about the Volkers. <laughs> just like very budget dragons. <laughs> Take the weakest part of a dragon, put it together, and this is a Volker. <laughs> the, the cool. The amount of times when someone came to my stream when I was playing Dragonflight, realized that I was playing Dragon, and was so freaking fascinated by the fact that I cannot fly right out of the get-go, just because I'm a Dragon. It's enormous. Full fantasy story that you want. It's still a lot of NPCs sitting there doing nothing and sending you on quests and there you're the the champion. But even like if you look at the raid finale cinematics for Amir Drusil, for Abris, for Vault of the Incarnates, they're all a little bit meh. Maybe yeah. the coolest character that we still have to this day is Eridicron because he's just cool, badass. He gives off this air of intelligence and foreshadowing a lot of conflict to come in the future. I mean, Firak is stupid as fuck but i loved it i i love the look of her sure and a lot of no bullshit i'm gonna get things done and it's probably one of the first villains that we have had or that we have seen in the game that's like no i'm not gonna fight you yet because you guys are like some nasty motherfuckers so i'm just gonna take my yeah, time vibe with and him. plan to actually be able to win like we don't we didn't really have this type of villain before and he's not in the game you don't get to fight i mean you fight iridicron in dawn of the infinite but that's not part of the season four anymore and you don't really fight fight him and that's like a time travel thing right there's no story that that comes out of iridicron just yet it will probably come in the world soul saga i don't even know if it's going to come in war within we don't know yet it could be but the coolest character in all of dragonfly just goes away after the first uh the raid and that's pretty much about it in terms of new content for you to do sure there's like the new world events with the soup and the st do you know what i don't like about dragonflight like um i cannot even really explain it you are leveling up and you're exploring all these basically an excuse to rep grind again is with all of these uh for example I don't even have an example because I haven't really paid attention because I ignored all of this. The progression system with all of these uh, nations, I don't know. I really don't like about... I, I don't like parts where you should just grind. It's just... 
Why? Stuff, but that usually gets boring after you do it a couple of times, and that's not something for you to do for a whole new season. You can play Plunderstorm, and that's pretty cool, but that's also divisive content, and I'm not sure if that... Actually, no, I am sure that is not for everybody. There's not much else new for you to do. There's no new endgame content. Sure, the endgame content that we have is pretty good and it's been polished as much as it can be polished, but it's pretty much the same formula. It's pretty much the same thing. You just farm Mythic Plus all day and then you do the raid once per week and then, well, thankfully you get to do a new fresh raid next week, but that's still the same race that we've had so far. And although the Mythic Dungeon pool for Season 4 is cool, and I'm personally excited because I love the Dragonflight Dungeons, we don't have new dungeons, period. We don't even have old dungeons being revamped, which for some people could have been new content. But that's not even coming back as well. And it's not necessarily to criticize that, oh, we should have had this. I'm just telling, listen, if you're expecting new stuff or if you love new things, that's not going to be Season 4. Season 4 is going to be something to keep you busy if you like WoW and you don't really want to stop and you want to prep your characters, maybe play some malls, maybe experience a different side of the game. Until War Within comes out, that's really the purpose for Season 4. It's not going to be this magical comeback to WoW moment that you might be hoping for. But this is the overall look at the game itself. If you like playing dungeons and if you like playing raids and if you've had fun in Dragonflight Season 4 is going to elevate that to the next level. I personally think so because all of the content that we're going to have access in Season 4 was the good content that we've had in Dragonflight and it's going to be way more fun because less restrictions, more items, more freedom to do stuff. If you're looking for new things <laughs> for that old moment, for that things to bring you back, I mean, it probably ended. wait for it the war. It ended. Don't worry about it. That's why I don't watch news channel. Ugh. That guy, look, 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 the reason I opened it was because of the thumbnail, and I was like, oh man, time to come back, question mark, and I was like, oh, this guy is gonna sell it on me, it's only 17 minutes, holy moly, but anyway.